man. So I was talking about how great it was. And then uh, for the, the article for Ukraine and Russia, they just sent missiles to the port. What the hell? Let me see something. Do, 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 do. No, leave it to Russia to screw up a good day. Russia and Ukraine. Let's see. Well, they may have bombed the port. I wonder if they bombed the, the, the grain. That'd be the dumbest thing. But I mean, who knows? All right. If someone's got some uh, information on that, send it my way. Well, that's a bummer. No. Oh. Okay. What else? Thoughts on the FDX offer to Voyager? I saw the offer from Sam Bakeman fried He looks like he's really wants to help out. I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't trust anybody anymore. So if Sam Bakeman fried is like, I got your best interest at heart. I don't believe you. So I think it uh, might just be uh, the worst case scenario is this. It's a predatory offer. He knows Voyager's on the ropes and he wants to pick it up for pennies and the dollars. And he doesn't really care about us as far as investors. That's the worst case scenario. Best case scenario is he's altruistic and he's trying to do the best thing for everybody. And we're going to go forward. Don't know. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. What can we do? What can we change this in any way, shape or form? Can we, are, are we a part of this process? We're not only worry about the things that you can change. And I can't change that. So, uh, if it does go through, We'll see how it works from there. But um, uh, I can't change. I don't know the motives, and I don't know enough about it to talk about it. So sorry, Will. Ada Gang. Douglas is uh, big on Ada Gang. Great. Let's see. Dan and – oh, James started at 3 o'clock at both the 15th wedding. Yeah, so sometimes it's going to happen. We're just going to have an overlap type of thing. That's okay. It doesn't really happen too often. I usually do this pretty early, but had a busy morning. <laughs> okay. Zito says not your keys, not your crypto, it's the whole aspect of government. And it's very right, which goes back to, of course, the rules that we're always talking about. The rules, my rules, not your rules. You can, you can adopt them. Don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. Very simple. All right, let's see here. Well, that's nice, let's see. Master Blaster, Cardano, Ripple, and Bitcoin are all you need. XRP, sure. Ivan says, now Rob is saying he's bullish. I'm not saying I'm bullish. I'm saying there's bullish signals all around. And uh, when the facts change, I change. I will not be one of those people who are like, all right, Bitcoin's going to 100,000. Get it in. This is the last opportunity to get it before 20 grand. Pfft, no. I just, see, I just see a path forward finally in a time frame that I think is reasonable. That's about it. See, that's, and that's why I'm glad you guys are here because a lot of times the crypto tourists who were here in uh, May of 2021, they would just assume, oh, this guy's bullish. And, uh, you know, yesterday he was bearish. So that doesn't make any sense. So I'm just going to spend everything on safe moon, whatever. So, um, yeah, you have to, you have to come in and understand the, the exact Minutia of what I'm talking about. All right, let's see here. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, that's interesting. Jingong Chow, I feel like the bottom is not in because in financial market, most people are not panicking, similar to March 2020. Do you feel, though, about the car, the car house market bubble will pop in recession in July? So here's the thing. It's a great point. So a couple of things. First of all, remember, we were in under 25 for the Fear and Greed Index, uh, for 70 days. It was the longest we've ever been in a fear and greed index for the crypto market ever. So you have to understand, you who are here are not like everybody else because everybody else is gone. Just look at my views, <laughs> which, is, which is okay. I don't really, I'm much happier now that I don't have to deal with the tourists and answer the dumbest questions of all time. Sorry, it was just getting super annoying to me. So now, like the people that are here are like, okay, well, I get it. I just got to, you know, there's a, there's a time frame. I have a horizon. I'm not going to invest more than I can afford to lose. I understand the risks. I know where I'm going. And that's you guys. So great. 
So for this one, we're not panicking because I got to tell you that those CPI numbers at 9.1, when they came out, I was like, okay, let's see how far down it goes. Went down. I think we dropped from 21,000 to just above 20. No, no, 20,000 just below. And then it came back up. I thought if they can do that in a two hour time frame and not freak the F out, I think we're going good. So there's that part. The unemployment rate is another concern, but we're at 3.6%. Normally for typical, what people consider an acceptable is between four and 5%. That number of unemployment rate should go up. However, there are a lot of people looking for jobs. I just had a guy here yesterday fixing the dishwasher. Uh, he was a plumber and we're like, Hey man, I need a, a plumber out for uh, our sports complex. We're going to put some more bathrooms in. He goes, I don't have anybody. It's just me. I used to have 15 people. I can't find anybody. Nobody wants to work. And I'm like, where are these people? Where are they going? And I asked him this. I'm like, where are the, where are all your workers going? He's like, I have no idea, but they don't really work too much. So I'm like, this is a big problem. So unemployment rates, I mean, unless people are going and, you know, well, it, it wouldn't make sense because employment rate was high. That means they have to go to the unemployment office. They have to get those checks and fill out the forms, but they're not. And that's, that's why it's that 3.6%. Let's see what it is now, but I don't think that's a high. The big thing though is the housing market. We see there's an increase of supply. There's a reduction in demand. As those rates go up, people can't afford a $450,000 single, single layer home, single level home in America. That's the average price in America, $450,000 for a house. Can you afford that at 5.5%? What is that, like $3,000 a month? It's pretty crazy. <laughs> James, James comes here and gives me a sticker of 20 bucks. Thanks, James. Keep it by Cardano. That would be great. But thanks for the money. I appreciate it. See, that's so nice. <laughs> he does a, we do a live stream at the same time. He comes over and gives me 20 bucks. Here you go, kid. Don't spend it all in one place. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Rob, how do we escape the macro? As the saying goes, you can't fight the Fed. It's true. Do you see the Fed quitting their quantitative tightening and starting back on um, quantitative easing anytime soon until the switch flips them out? It all depends. It all depends on where the numbers come from and what numbers they pick and if they're actually combating uh, inflation adequately and whatever they consider to be an adequate fighting of inflation. Remember, the numbers were skewed I think we all know that at 8.5%, and it was not transitory. So when they take a look at these numbers, there's a lot of things that they can play around with. But the real question is, to me, the real question is this. How is the GDP doing? Because we already had a reduction in, in, in Q1. If we get a second reduction of GDP in Q2, which I think it, we, we will, that means we're in officially in a recession. And then, of course, all the people flip out. That is the bigger question. So maybe at that point, then they start firing up those printers and going, well, worked pretty well last time. And uh, we'll see how it goes again. They could do that very easily. I mean, what's a couple trillion among friends? We'll see. Let's see. 20 bucks for a pizza. Hope he doesn't want one. <laughs> Thank you, James. Very sweet of you. Appreciate it. And this is a good point. Uh, Steel Reserve, that is the finest uh, beer that you can buy in 7-Eleven. Uh, it's a uh, whopping uh, $1.25, I think now. I don't even know. <laughs> That's the worst beer of all time. Jay Jetty says, assuming the 75 basis points increase, how will the August CPI numbers affect the markets without a Fed meeting until December? That's the big question. That's why I believe they're going to go up a full point. This is no one, no one's with me. No one's on board with me. That's okay. I'll just stand out there because they got to do these things. They got to make the hard decisions. And I think that, uh, well, I won't say it's a hundred percent guaranteed, but I mean, I think it's a 50, 50 shot, quite honestly, a full basis point, a full percentage point, excuse me, to come through or three quarters of a percentage point, which one it's going to be. Well, you got to combat this inflation quickly. And if those numbers, you know they didn't come up, CPI numbers proved it. So do you want to rip, take the bandit off and do what you're supposed to do, like your hero Volcker did, Jerome Powell? It's up to you. There's a lot of calls for Jerome Powell saying he is inadequate and not doing his job. I think this would be one way for him to say, all right, here's my job, and he does that. And of course, the entire economy suffers, but the same thing happened in the 80s in, in America. 
when Volcker came out and said, all right, we cannot have 14.8% inflation. This is ridiculous. Let's start raising these rates. And uh, he did. And uh, it, he took a hit for a couple of years, but he, as they say, this is not them saying, not me saying this. Uh, he staved off a, uh, instead of a recession, a depression. So we'll see. I don't know. Great question, Rob. Why don't you use Binance? You can use, I don't think I can use it. Binance US, Texas. I think, uh, however, uh, I live in Puerto Rico now. So I have signed up. I'm just waiting for some things. And then I'm going to actually, I'm going to have somebody from Binance come on actually and talk to you guys. <laughs> All right. Mountain man, mountain man bear finally. No, it's just me being lazy. Let's see. Ah, that's a great question, Marty. Rob, based on the info we have presently, what percentage would you put into crypto versus housing right now? All of it. Let me preface it with this. This is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. Don't do what I do. Don't trust me. I'm a guy in his mom's basement, green screen, all that good stuff. Why would you buy a house right now? Why would you buy any type of um, property when they are vastly, vastly overpriced and the rates are extremely high? Unless you get a super distressed asset in a pretty great area, and there's no reason so for us, me and my wife were talking about this a couple of nights ago. We're not going to buy anything. We're going to wait a solid you know, 12 months to 18 months to see where things go and go from there. So I'm not putting anything, but um, I'm still buying crypto, which is pretty easy. Dollar cost average. I buy every, I'm waiting for tomorrow. I was pretty happy to see uh, the little decline today. So we'll see what happens on Sunday. And then of course on the 27th, ooh, which I'm going to have Simon Yu from StormX on. He's going to come on right after the Jerome Powell talk. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Again, I've just been saving up my money for the 27th. If Jerome Powell comes out and says, all right, full percentage point up, I think the markets will drop. I don't know how much. If he comes out and says 0.75, I don't think the markets are going to do much at all. At that point, I just, you know, put all my, put the money that I've been saving up for the last, uh, since the 13th, seven, two weeks or so to put it into Bitcoin and a couple of alts, which will remain nameless until later and go from there. So me personally, housing is not great. Uh, I'm waiting for those houses that are 450,000 to become, you know, 325,000 and lower. We'll see. I am a Miller Lite guy. That's the only time I get super serious. <laughs> Michael Payne, how was I not modded yet? I'll give it to you. Let's see. Michael, remind me again. And I'll get you modded. George is always bullish. You got to appreciate George. He's like, he's like, look, I am right here. I'm right in the center. I'm not going to go here or here. I'm just right here. Bullish to the end. Good for him. I think... I can't speak for George, but I think he's more really looking out the outlook, which is way out there. You know, like, hey, in two years, three years. Sure. I'm the same way. I still believe in the four-year cycles. So I think in 2025, we're going to see a pretty big run. We got a long time to dollar cost average. That's a good question. Is Jerome Powell a green spanner or a Volcker? He's a Volcker. We'll find out, but I think he's more of a Volcker. Yes, I do have more mods than James. James has got some pretty solid people, but I just went on a modding spree one day. I was, uh, I, I chanted my inner Oprah and said, hey, you get a wrench, you get a wrench, and you get a wrench. No. Terrence says Bitcoin's going to 3,895 by March of next year. That's very precise. Someone take a screenshot of this. 3,895 in March. If that's true... I will have Terrence Winston on my show and he will host the show. And I will jump in this pool. <laughs> yes, Michael, let's stop this little thing. Just rip off the band-aid and let's get the road recovery. I agree. Hmm. 
<laughs> Anu Nunaki. I never called you a scammer. I never said anything which was untrue about you, but I could enlighten people in regard to your past history. I'm all, we I'm all ears, and everybody else is An Nunaki. Tell them what I used to do. I think everybody knows my history. Let's see. So Army, eight years. Uh, 91 Bravo, which back in those days was a, an Army medic. Then it was a 91 Charlie or 91 Whiskey M6, which was an LVN. Then I became, and of course, I was sick of being in the, in the field, so I went into uh, nursing, which was 91 Whiskey M6 back in the day. And uh, eight years, worked in burn units and ICUs and field and stuff like that. Then got out and then did more of uh, home health for like 15 years. Also did uh, medical device sales at a place called KCI. Then I figured out that job stands for just over broke. And I said, I don't want to do that. So I started up a uh, online education platform, which I helped nurses pass their clinical exam through an online education. And of course, they, it was a pretty lucrative type of business. And of course, along the way, it was also real estate and uh, investing just for my wife. And we did a lot of things with that. Not just uh, uh, mostly retail, no commercial uh, apartments and mostly houses. And then, of course, stumbled into Amazon FBA. And then uh, after that, well, I forgot four kids and two grandkids and then uh, lived most of my life here in El Paso. So tell me what else you got. was a long rant. Ah. Ooh, what's this? That would be great. Old guy tech. Uh, we will see 100 basis points on Wednesday, then 17,000 Bitcoin by Thursday. Man, that would be awesome. I know people want to hear that, but that would be pretty cool. And But here's the thing you got to remember. Right now, the price of, of Bitcoin at 21 four or whatever it is. Is that cheap or is that expensive? Well, it's expensive. I mean, if it goes to 17K, duh, obviously, Rob. But are you here for next week? Are you here for six months? Are you here for two years? Are you here for five years? Are you here for 10 years? Then you, then you have to ask yourself, what's my time frame? What's my risk tolerance? And do I think this is risky or do I think this is expensive or if it's inexpensive? That's the big question you have to ask yourself. Thanks. Thanks, Capo. James in the house. I would like to use Binance too. So most of the time, remember I'm in Texas, so I can't use Binance, I'm an American. And in Texas, you couldn't use Binance US. I moved to uh, Puerto Rico last year. Now we vacation here in Texas. But uh, I could have used Binance, but I used Voyager the whole time. And uh, I didn't go out so swimmingly well. And now, I'm using back to Coinbase. So I'll be starting up Binance US in a little bit. Just waiting for authorizations and stuff. Wow. My friend just bought a house. Well, congratulations. That's good. You know, I got to tell you, 5.5%. When we first bought like this, we bought this house in 2003. And the rate was six, no, no, 7.25 or 7.35%. I thought we were getting enough great deal so it just depends on what you think is awesome like 5.5 percent i remember i was talking about refinancing back in the day and that was one of the rates like it was below six i was like wow below six that's crazy so just what it is what robert lou hit a one million steps in sweatcoin oh i forgot to tell you guys there's a change so for sweatcoin you know that free app did i say it's free it's free there's a free app called Sweatcoin. It's been around for three years. Depending on the day you look at it, it's between number one and number five health and fitness app in the globe on Apple, iOS, and Android. So anyhow, there's a link in the description. Let me show you what it looks like. Right. Actually, there's two links you should be aware of. That right here. There's two. So this is Sweatcoin. And here's the deep dive video we did. That's over on the second channel. And when you download this, uh, you can follow me. And if you beat me in the steps per month, the top, it used to be the top three people that beat me. I gave them either 50 Sweatcoins or they could come on the show and I could just, we could just shoot the breeze. Or I do a portfolio review, whatever they wanted. We're going to change that as of this month. If you... If 
not only do you beat me, but the top 10 people who beat me, uh, the top three get those same choices, but numbers four through 10, I'll give you 50 sweat coins just for having more steps than me. That's it. Uh, I'll put the rules and we're building it out on the website. You can check it out. So that's it. So just download the, the app. It's free, you know, and then uh, start walking. Get off your duff and start walking. And then also there's another one. Uh, this is S Miles Bitcoin. It's another app that's free that you can, instead of earning uh, sweat coin, you earn Satoshis. It's right there. And uh, that's also free. So, and you know what's great about that? Here's what's great about that. Ah, you can use them both at the same time. Crazy, I know. So, get download and start step. <laughs> download those and get the stepping. That's it. Not the app. I don't like stepping. <laughs> I need to write you in my will. Uh, more trades than you'll be. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. Well. We'll see the spreads. James says the spreads are pretty ridiculous. We'll see. I don't know. Voyager's got all my Stormx. I still have Stormx on. I have some Stormx on Voyager, but most of it's I have BGX token. But I took a lot off. Because I, I saw the, we all saw the writing on the wall, right? 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 All right. <laughs> what if he says 200? Two percentage points. Armageddon. Not for me. That'd be, I got to tell you, between us, if Jerome Powell goes, you know what? We've discussed this here at the Federal Reserve and all the governors have decided that we're going to have to raise this by two percentage points and we'll reevaluate in August. If that happens, I will be the happiest person on this planet because you know what's going to happen? All those, that money that I was stocking away, stocking away, waiting for these, these cliffs to happen, that's what's going to happen. It'll fall off the face of the cliff. TradFi will hit. Crypto will hit harder. It will drop, and I will buy like crazy. Chance of that happening? 0.5%. Uh, okay. For <laughs> real, I put in the work. I would like that as well. <laughs> it's the best answer is no way dude a little hopium so you buy and they pull the rug again time will tell i don't know like it really just depends on what you want to get into remember just because your dollar cost averaging into into a specific token crypto doesn't mean it's going to come back i always talk about um a dash of salt and what i mean by a dash of salt is here let's just look it up I'll show you a dash of salt, a dash of salt. What is that? So there was this great, there was this great crypto called salt not too long ago in 2017. And it was awesome. And uh, it was supposed to be the, the next big lending platform. And uh, it topped out at 14 bucks and it came down here and you can dollar cost average and maybe make something out of it. But that's a long time not to make a lot of gains. So that's salt. Dash is a little bit different. Dash actually has made a little bit of a comeback, I think, number 92. But that one again, you know, pretty darn high. Wow, 1349. And of course, you could dollar cost average down here, but it would take you a long time to get that back. So that's why, like, I mean, in all honesty, I invest into this one of the safer ones and the most volatile volatile asset class. So look, that's 2017. And come back here here. Now look, we're down here. So if you bought here, that pretty much that. Well, remember, like I bought, I bought here. Let me show you something. You know where I bought? Right here. 11,000, 15,000, 17,000. That's where I bought. And I got one time lucky, like 8,500 or something. But it, it took me a while, but I just kept going for three years and it worked out okay. But it took me quite a bit of time. But remember, every time you dollar cost average, it brings your cost basis down. So that's just one of those things. 
<laughs> That's good. Ah, who wants to be? Teju, you're already a moderator. Tesla, you're a moderator. Kapo, you're a moderator. Nick, aren't you a moderator already? Beardy's like one of the first ones. It used to be one mullet. One mullet's too busy making a bunch of money, trading and whatnot. Robert, you're a moderator. Where did Tommy go? No, Tommy's a moderator. <laughs> All right, Michael, there, here's your moderator. Crypto McFly, I got a lot of moderators. Why do I do that? Community. Now, there's just one thing I ask for to be a moderator. I, you guys cannot ban somebody just because they say something that they were ticked off at me or something like that, or they call me a scammer or whatever else. Oh. Uh, you gotta let them vent. I mean, they say something like, like ridiculous, you know, like, like Rob drinks steel reserve or something. I mean, something crazy way out there. Then of course ban them, but uh, give people their due, let them vent. It's okay. Everybody's going through some kind of war internally. So that's okay. I'm just gonna, my thing is this, I will just show up. That's all I gotta do. I just have to show up and take the hits and keep going. I will grind everybody down to powder because I'll just keep showing up. <laughs> don't you stream at Twitch? I don't stream at Twitch. Easy, Beardy. Those are fighting words. Although, if it's the only thing available, I will drink uh, those. Well, actually, that is true. I don't know if anybody's had Keystone Light. It's great. <laughs> All right. So... So now we just devolve into the, to the craziness that is my community. God, it's so fun. I do, I do like this stuff. It's great. But I got to get going. Look, I promised my wife some things. If I don't get off this show, it'll be bad news for me. So I got to get out of here. So look, everybody, thanks again for stopping by. It's always fun to chat with everybody and answer the questions and all that stuff. I only ask you for one thing. If you'd like to, hit the like button. That'd be fantastic. It's like the only way that, that YouTube actually pushes these videos out. And that's it. You don't have to subscribe because I'll be here tomorrow and you know where to find me. So that's all we got going on. So everybody, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate it. All the links in the description, check them all out. And that's it for today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your weekend. Adios. Bye.